So we go over guides and gameplay for a lot of different games on this channel, but we haven't touched on one of the best. The Witcher 3. And not The Witcher that you know and love, but the game within the game. Went. This has been a stand-in since the game's original release, and personally one of my favourite elements for the game as well. It's like the base building in Fallout 4. I shouldn't love it as much as I do, but that doesn't stop me seeping hours into this, learning and messing around with it. So, we're going to cover all things Gwent, and how to become a master at this amazing card game. What? Chapter 1, Faction The Basics. Teams. To start with The Basics, Gwent is a game of risk versus reward. It's a strategy based game where the choices you make will affect how and if you win. You play your first game at the Inn at White Orchards and personally I believe it's a great place to start. Each game starts with you and the opponent drawing 10 cards, two of which can be discarded. That will be the hands that you will start the game with. At the end of each round, the player with the highest amount of power will win. The end of a round is determined after each player has either run out of cards or passed their go on to the other player. You will need to win two out of three rounds to win, and you will need to make sure that you manage the amount of cards that you have in your deck to last all three rounds if it does come to it. Chapter 2 Card Abilities and Effects now each card can have a different ability. These are shown on the left hand side as symbols below where the class is. These abilities can have the following different attributes. Agility. It will allow you to choose where to place your card either in the range row or the combat row. Medics. Once played will allow you to choose one card from your discard pile which will be played instantly. Morale. It will boost the power level by one or any card on the selected row. Muster, when played, will draw every card of the same name from your deck to your hand instantly. Spy, will be played on the opponent's side, however it does allow for you to draw two additional cards straight to your hand. Tight Bond, when placed next to an identical card, it will double the power level. So as an example, it will go from four to four to eight to eight. Hero cards. These are very specific cards which cannot be affected by any status or summoned by any form of medic. Now, talking status cards, there are a number of different cards which can be used. From weather cards, which can weaken any card on the selected row, which does depend on the weather which is used, of which can also be removed by the clear weather card, to commander's horn, which will increase the power level of any card placed on the selected row and the decoy cards, which can take the place of any card on your side, which will then return it straight to your hands. You've also got the Scorch card, which will destroy the strongest cards currently placed on either side. So if either you or your opponent have a power level card of, say, 10, both of them would be destroyed. Chapter 3. Getting New Cards now, as you're progressing through the game, you will come across a lot of early game innkeepers, which I would suggest to go straight into their inventory and purchase every card that you can come across. Once the map has opened up a little bit, you will want to go over to Novigrad and buy the Guide to Gwent book as early as you possibly can. This is, though, if you don't get it at the start of the game, as I did, all of the footage that I recorded was from a fresh save. This is basically an in-game tracker to let you know how many cards you still need and how many cards you have. Once you've got the tracker, you will need to start practicing, but don't worry, you can play any random scrub, really. Uh, you can go out to them and once you defeat them, you'll get a random allocated card per player. You've also got vendors, merchants, innkeepers, they're always the best source that you can locate early on and you will also get a innkeeper quest that you can go through. Once you've defeated all three, you'll get a couple of legendary cards, something that really bolsters you up early game. There are also some several quests which do involve missable cards as well. On screen, I will show you the six quests that you will need to pay attention to because once these have been completed, you can no longer get those cards again. Now you know the basics of Gwent, you need to know how to create your deck, starting with Chapter 4, Deck Building, Factions. So, first you need to choose your faction, but how do you do it? Well, the starters, you're given Northern Realms from the beginning. Honestly, it's a great place to start and it's one of the easiest decks to learn. There's a lot of the early in-game cards that you do get from quests, merchants, vendors that you're able to buy and you also get from the random games of Gwen are all tailored around either all faction cards or 
Northern Realm cards, so it's definitely one that you want to try and build up early game. They also have the ability that allows you to draw an extra card at the end of each round that you win. The monster deck has the ability to keep a random card out at the end of each round. It will be selected for you, unfortunately you don't get the choice, but the monster deck has more of a focus on the muster mechanic, basically allowing you to play as many cards as possible with only one card being placed. The Nilfgaard decks, they focus on special and high level individual cards. It is one of the hardest decks I personally find to actually build just because of the cards that you need to make it a feasible deck, but the ability is worth it. Uh, the Nilfgaard ability allows you to win any round that ends in a draw. And the Skotail deck, this is a deck that focuses on agility, it's more about the flexibility for where you can place your cards. A lot of them are for either the ranged or the close combat, so depending on who it is that you are battling in Gwen, you get that a little bit of flexibility to choose where the card is going. So now you know what all the factions are, I'm going to give you just a couple of tips in the next chapter, chapter 5. Now, this final chapter is probably going to be a small one, but it is definitely essential, and it's just a few tips for you to use whilst you're building your first couple of decks. Now, you're going to want to try and keep as close to the minimum number of unit cards as you can, uh, which is 22. Reason being is for when you're using the majority of the different decks, you're going to want to try and get access to your more powerful and more selective cards as quickly as possible, and as reliably as possible. If you're loading it up with a bunch of fodder and a bunch of cards that you don't need, you're just never going to get the cards that you really want and the cards that you've actually spent a long time earning. The only deck, however, this does not apply to is the monster deck. Reason being is the muster mechanic. You want as many cards of the same name as possible. So you could be going in there with 30, 40 uh, card units uh, rather than 22, but that's okay if you use a monster. When you're building any deck as well, you want to try and link up as many of the compatible ability types as possible. As an example, um, when you're using either Northern Realms or the Nilfgaard deck, you'll be using a lot of the Spy alongside the Medic and the Decoy. The reason being is the Spy is probably one of the most powerful cards that you can get. The more cards that you have in a game of Gwent at any one time in your hand, the more likely you are to win. And you can go up against some players and some like NPCs where you can win a round with 15, 20 power. And then there's times when I was recording this footage, the just for one round alone, the power went up to over 120, over 130 because we were both using the spy, the decoy, and the medic quite heavily in both decks. But as much as I can go over and say, make sure you've got this, make sure you've got that, the only thing you can really do is practice, locate the cards, keep on grinding all the NPCs, the random fodder that you're able to find, and then practice a little bit more if that's what you want to do, and that is what you want to achieve to become the Gwent Master. That's the best advice that I can give. Um, I will be showing you a couple of games of Gwent at the end of this video, um, just so you can see how I personally play the card game. There's going to be no commentary, so if you want to come off the video now, I understand. But before you do, if you have found this video helpful or informative, please do let me know down in the comments below. It would be greatly appreciated. But until next time, take care and peace.